In May of 2022, Kim Kardashian told Vogue magazine that she had lost 16 pounds in three weeks for the Met Gala. I had to lose 16 pounds down today to, to be able to fit this. She lost the weight so she could be thin enough to fit into a dress that once belonged to Marilyn Monroe. She claimed that she hadn't eaten carbs or sugar in three weeks weeks it was such a challenge it was like a role right i was You're determined many people speculated that she had used semaglutide despite her silence chatter persisted online and the treatment was deemed an open secret amongst hollywood a-listers for as long as i can remember we the people have always been obsessed with health and wellness in the last decade we've watched it become a whole aesthetic feeding into our obsession of belonging to something that is much bigger than ourselves. With the rise of trendy activewear, bigger than our face water bottles, $200 alarm clocks, fitness watches, fitness rings, Pilates, and more, I fear that somewhere down the line, we've lost the plot. As dystopian as it sounds, at the back of our head, there's always a voice that states, you can never put a price on health. So we continue the cycle, whether or not we are actually seeing improvement in our actual health. My name is Janet Domahina. Hello, if you're new here, I make feel good content centered around being and feeling your best. So if you like content like that, please feel free to subscribe and like this video if you wanna see more content like this. Today, we're gonna to be discussing the wellness epidemic. As we dive into this topic, I want to make it very known. I love all things health and wellness. I think that we can love something and critique it in a healthy way. And I hope we can just all have healthy discussions about this stuff in the comment section. Before we get into this video, I wanna to thank today's sponsor, which is Beekeepers Naturals. As a productive girly, it's important that I'm supporting my immune health to keep me going. And Beekeepers Naturals, propolis throat spray is my go-to for immune support beekeepers naturals throat spray contains propolis which not only supports your immune health but also soothes scratchy throat that you may be having and it contains major vitamins and minerals like vitamin b c d zinc and iron i like how simple it is to incorporate within my daily routine i take four sprays to get me started with my day and the throat spray is so easy to take with me on the go. Their products are not only third party tested, but they're also made with clean ingredients. Click the link in my description box and use my code to try them out. You can also access these products at Target. Thank you Beekeepers Naturals for sponsoring this portion of the video. Statements about Kim Kardashian's rapid weight loss drew in criticism amongst advocates of the body positivity movement, including Lily Reinhardt. She made comments on her Instagram story stating how wrong it was to openly admit to starving yourself for the sake of the Met Gala, when you know very well that millions of young men and women are looking up to you and listening to your every word. The ignorance is otherworldly disgusting. I speak up because I don't see enough people with large platforms calling out toxic behavior in our industry. Kim Kardashian responded to the criticism saying, okay, <laughs> Christian Bale can do it for a movie role and that's acceptable. Even Renee Zellweger gained weight for a role. It's all the same thing. I wasn't saying, hey everybody, why don't you go and lose weight in a short period of time? <laughs> also admits that if she had not been able to lose the weight, she just simply couldn't have gone. It was just important for her to reach that goal for herself. Anyway, Kim Kardashian has obviously built her brand around being the ultimate it girl, maintaining a flawless physique while single-handedly raising the beauty standard year after year after year. Although Kim Kardashian received so much backlash for possibly using semaglutide, speculation about her weight loss led to high demand for the medication Ozempic. And that's where it all started, guys. Let's talk about Ozempic, baby. Ozempic is an injectable prescription medication that is used to manage blood sugar levels in patients with type 2 diabetes. It is based on a naturally occurring human hormone called 
glucagon-like peptide 1, otherwise known as GLP-1, which plays an important role in regulating appetite and blood sugar levels. The active ingredient in Ozempic is a molecule called semaglutide, which acts as a GLP-1 agonist. In other words, it mimics the structure of GLP-1 and activates its receptors. Studies have shown that people with obesity are often less sensitive to the hormones that make them feel full, but by slowing gastric emptying, drugs like Ozempic can restore feelings of fullness in these patients. After everyone learned about what semaglutide was and how to get their hands on it, people ran to get their hands on it. Unfortunately, it became so much of a trend that people who are actually dealing with these chronic illnesses like diabetes are hardly able to get their hands on it, which is so heartbreaking to me. Multiple celebrities and large creators have openly admitted to using the drug for weight loss, including Elon Musk, Chelsea Handler, Whoopi Goldberg. Chelsea Handler even stated that she didn't even know she was on Ozempic. She was just prescribed it by her doctor to help her lose a couple of pounds. And she didn't even realize it until it became popular, which is crazy to me. Like you're just taking whatever like, without doing any research on it. I'm sorry about the lighting guys. It's a little gloomy out. Dr. Carol Lieberman, a board certified Beverly Hills psychiatrist was quoted saying, celebs don't like to wait for anything from champagne that takes forever to arrive at their tables to diets that take forever to help them arrive at their ideal weight. It was the best kept secret at first, which added to its coolness. If you got Ozempic, it meant you were in the know. Now with the rise of Ozempic has come a lot of criticism for those who choose to get on the drug. People claim that they are taking the easy way out. I have never used the medication, so I can't speak to how it makes you feel what it does. However, I have been on multiple weight loss journeys. In my time on YouTube, I've documented almost all of them. Anytime I've gone on a weight loss journey, it has never been easy. Losing weight is not easy. And although people who are taking the drug are getting a little help, changing your lifestyle is not easy. And I highly recommend everybody just have grace for others. I mean, we're all going through it. And there's several people who are dealing with diseases that they just cannot control. And Ozempic has really helped people maintain a healthy weight and a lifestyle. I see, yeah. I'm doing that wonderful shot that yeah. works for folks who need some help and it's been really good for No, me. mine is a different one than people assume, but I, I ended up having to do that too because yeah. my, my blood work got so yeah, really bad. You, yeah. and, and it's great for people like us who have you know issues. If health is the most important thing for all of us, then we should be supporting it. However, I do sympathize for those who actually need the medication for type two diabetes and other chronic illnesses. I sympathize with those people because they need it and they're not able to get their hands on it. Whenever a big content creator or a celebrity shows up with an insane transformation and an insane body transformation, their comment section is flooded with comments asking them for their fitness routine, asking them how they lost the weight, asking for all the tea. And depending on how big and popular the celebrity is, their answer will and can lead to everybody just jumping on the bandwagon. I've seen it happen time and time again in the last 10 years, and we're going to talk about all of the different trends in the last 10 years, all of the different fitness trends. Starting with 2014, which was the rise of boutique fitness studios like SoulCycle. SoulCycle is a boutique spin studio priced at around $34 a class. They quickly built a cult following because of their minimal aesthetic and their maximal motivational atmosphere, <laughs> making it more than just a workout, but a lifestyle embraced by its devoted members. Some people never know what they are capable of. Be inspired by your passion. Kick some ass. You're stronger than you think. You're more powerful than you know. I know you are. Find your best self. A higher expression of yourself. Celebrities like Beyonce and Vanessa Ann Hudgens were proud members of Soul. However, by 2017, the Soul Cycle hype began to fade. An article titled How Soul Cycle Lost Its Soul states, Soul Cycle was never built to be for the masses. 
Keeping people out was just as important to the business as loyal riders. The bigger SoulCycle got, the less desirable it became. The less desirable it became, the less people had a tolerance for the culture it fostered. The minute the company became mainstream, the magic dissolved. Which is so sad. Like, why can't we all just have access to nice things, great quality things? And this is not only a trend in the fitness world, this is a trend in the fashion world, travel, everything. Once us peasants get our hands on things, the exclusivity dies and the things are no longer cool and trendy, which is so lame. From 2017 to 2019 came the rise of weightlifting and girls who lift. We also saw the rise in the fitness influencer, for example, Whitney Simmons. These girls became the it girls of fitness. They made Instagram and YouTube content centered around their weekly workout splits what they eat in a week, and how they maintain a healthy lifestyle. This aesthetic went crazy, okay? I was obsessed with fitness athletes at this time. I would bookmark their workouts, pull them up at the gym, and do them, and it just made me love working out. This was a game changer because up until this time, women avoided weightlifting because of fears of becoming too bulky or too masculine. And these fitness influencers showed us that you can still be feminine and lift weights in the gym. Activewear brands like Gymshark rose to popularity because all the girlies were in the gym. And if we're gonna be in the gym every single day, we wanna look cute. And they capitalized off of that moment. They were already selling activewear for men, but they jumped on and started selling activewear for women once they saw a demand for it. Multiple brands popped up like Alphaly, Balance Athletica, and more, and they all garnered their own exclusive athletes that they signed a contract with, and these girls were sent free clothes, promoted all of the drops, did try on hauls and shared with you the price point. I would watch all of these hauls and figure out like which clothing pieces I wanted to buy. I loved it. I loved the girls who lift era. I don't really follow this content as much anymore as I've gotten older, my priorities have shifted. I was so proud to be a part of this aesthetic. In fact, I posted a few workouts myself around this time. Macaroni in a pot, that's a wet. In 2020 to 2021, we all know what happened. The panini hit and we all were stuck at home and had to figure out how we were going to hit our fitness goals. And that is when the rise of at-home workouts crept into our lives. We had a different group of fitness influencers take the stage like Chloe Ting, Grow With Joe, Lily Sabri, Carolyn Gervin. Each of these influencers had things that they specialized in and whatever you were looking for in your at-home workouts, you could find it on YouTube or Instagram. Chloe Ting and the Two Week Shred. I still have nightmares from her theme song. Today's app workout is just 10 minutes, but it's gonna be intense. I am definitely one of those people who participated in the two week shred challenge and I filmed it and posted it on my channel. <gasps> All right guys, it is day seven. We're gonna do these two corn abs. I found that my arms got stronger as you can see. Um, my, maybe. Chloe Ting receives so much backlash for her programs. She uses a lot of SEO tactics to title her videos, which is what leads to the backlash that she gets. I mean, obviously, there's no way that you can physically shred in two weeks unless you're already pretty fit. It is a great way to get yourself into working out. I did the program several times. I loved her program. We also have Grow With Joe, who rose to popularity because of her low intensity walking workouts that you can do in the comfort of your living room. It's a sort of like cozy cardio. Lily Sabri was known for her matte Pilates workouts. You're gonna crunch across the body, then reach to the ankle and back. Lily Sabri is a Pilates instructor. I loved Lily Sabri workouts. 
Carolyn Gervin had us doing strength training in our living rooms. She had multiple strength training programs from Epic to Fuel to Iron. These were long programs that were like four to six weeks long, but you saw results, okay? Most of these ladies have their own apps now, but yeah, I'm a huge fan of it all. Moving into 2022 and 2023, Lori Harvey stepped out on the red carpet at the Met Gala, giving everything okay? she was giving body and when asked how she maintains such a flawless physique she said one word and that was pilates, pilates. It changed my mind. normani just told us pilates so we all need to pilates uh, and before you know it oh did you see that lightning and before we knew it everybody and i mean everybody was hopping that was under, was hopping on the Pilates trend, including myself, including myself. What can I say? Including myself. Pilates became the it girl workout of 2022 and 2023. All the girlies were booking solid core classes, even though solid core isn't technically true Pilates. It is a Pilates inspired workout. It's still hard and it will still have you looking snatched. Let me tell you, I've been obsessed with Pilates recently. So let's talk a little bit about the history of Pilates. Pilates was created in the 1920s by Joseph Pilates. He was a German physical trainer that created Pilates for the purpose of rehabilitation. Some of the first people trained by Pilates were soldiers returning from war and dancers such as Martha Graham and George Blanching to strengthen their bodies and to heal their aches and pains. The Pilates method is an exercise system focused on improving flexibility, strength, and body awareness without necessarily building bulk. The method is a series of controlled movements performed on a specifically designed spring resistance apparatus or on the floor and the sessions are supervised by a trained instructor. Now, Pilates became so popular that it had the girlies literally denouncing weightlifting <laughs> and running away from the big box gyms in general. A lot of girlies claim that Weightlifting causes a lot of inflammation and stress to the body, which I can agree with. However, we cannot deny that weightlifting is important, especially to us as women. As women, we are more susceptible to osteoporosis and osteopenia, which means as we age as women, we are naturally losing bone density. And as we get older, we are more susceptible to injury because of it. You can still go to Pilates. I love Pilates. I still go to Pilates. I love it, okay? However, we cannot neglect weightlifting. It's definitely important for us as we age. Pilates has become so popular. It is still popular to this day. Of course, it's received a lot of criticism because now it is just really expensive. Are people who own Pilates studios okay? Are you, you guys are actually charging 45, 42 bucks for a singular class? Pilates studios used to be priced at around like 180 a month. Now these studios have increased their pricing to around $250 a month for their unlimited plans. If you want to get a membership for $140 a month, you can come to the studio four times now mind you right you buy a membership for a month and they only bought like eight reformers okay because that's all they could buy and they all fill up so you have to now take your schedule move it around try to get into a class if you miss one let's say you can only get into three classes a month now you just paid 140 dollars for three classes a month and i understand supply and demand is a real thing inflation is a real thing and these studios only have so many slots some studios only have 15 reformers. If they have all these people wanting to come, they're going to raise the pricing. Currently we are in 2024 and we've seen the rise of walking as well as running. All of the fitness enthusiasts are becoming runners. And that is honestly the one trend I just have not jumped on 100% because I am just not a runner. And I've said this multiple times on my channel and I'll say it again, I am very much afraid of being snatched on the side of the road. I'm very much afraid of being kidnapped. It's a lot, okay, it's a lot for me. I have to get 
out of my head when it comes to it. But anyway, all of the fitness enthusiasts have been purchasing all of the running gear, like running vests, hokas, and other popular running shoes, goo, and other supplements that are taken while running to keep your energy levels up. More and more people are signing up for 5Ks, marathons, half marathons, and it's just become a big community online as well. Running is the one trend I haven't jumped head first into. I hope to one day, I just have to get over my fear of running alone. I have to get over my fear eventually. Maybe we'll do a vlog on that soon. Also, people have realized that walking is so essential for your fitness journey, including myself. I've shared so much about my walking journey here on this channel. Walking has changed my life. It is one of the main reasons I was finally able to lose weight this past year. It helps with your mental health, it keeps you active, and it's easy, it's low impact, it's just, it's simple. It is almost summer, which means it's time to get back to our daily 14 mile hot girl walks, so come with me. These take like five hours, so I don't even know if walk is an appropriate word for it, it's more like a hot girl trek. Anyways, this was my first time trying this on a spring day that was warm enough to not wear a full coat, but slightly chilly so that I wasn't miserably hot and sweaty during the walk. The weather is just getting so beautiful in New York and I could not be happier about it. We've had so many trends come and go, I don't think there's a problem with jumping on fitness trends. I think it's fun. Although I think it is definitely important to try new things, it's very, very important to learn how to build consistent habits and to be consistent within your journey. In order to see results, you have to be consistent. I don't think that we can discuss everything that we have discussed so far without talking about the erasure of the body positivity movement. Growing up in the early 2000s was rough, especially if you weren't smaller than a size two. Diet culture was brutal and there was no sympathy for anyone living in a bigger body. The headlines claimed that I've gained 40 pounds since I stood on this very stage in my underwear for our panty party show that we did back in November. By 2015, things began to drastically change because of the body positivity movement. And people were finally not feeling as though they were just pushed into the shadows. Brands began to expand their sizing. We started to push companies like Victoria's Secret and their male-centered branding off a cliff. And we celebrated companies like Savage X, Fenty, and Aerie for celebrating all body types. Things appeared to be moving in the right direction. And the key word here is appeared. Many people, including myself, have noticed that we are slowly starting to creep back into our old ways, which makes me so sad because the body positivity movement was so important. Although I'm someone who talks a lot about weight loss, I am definitely someone who has struggled with my weight my whole life. I have been 30 pounds heavier than I am now, and I have been 10 pounds lighter than I am now. And with the rise of body positivity, it helped me feel confident in my body no matter where I was in my journey. Whenever I was 30 pounds heavier, let me tell you, I was still wearing whatever I wanted to wear. I did not care because I just felt like there was just more of a sense of community amongst people and we were moving into a more accepting world. It's so sad because we're currently starting to see brands no longer offer plus size clothing, they're no longer being inclusive. And this is something that many marginalized groups deal with as a dark skinned black woman. This is something that I've always dealt with in the beauty space, not being able to find my foundation shade, struggling to find complexion products that don't make me look ashy. Which side of my face is the black face paints or the Euphoria foundation? You guys, there could be like 10 more shades in between these two shades. In addition to that, when we go to the actual website and we look at the swatch, not only is the swatch online literally jet black, there's literally only four or five shades for people that actually have dark complexions. Not really for black people, for being honest. The thing that is so sad is that unless we consistently have our foots on these brands' necks, they will consistently go back to their old ways. We have to consistently be loud about these things or we're not going to see any change happen and that is a problem that is a problem there is a problem there honestly it is exhausting because i know how it feels to want to be included but to not be included a hundred percent when it comes to these companies so we've got to do better and there are several people who are speaking out about it 
For example, Fanita, who is a TikToker, who recently made a video stating that she is over supporting brands who don't support people of all body types. The reason your plus size clothing isn't selling is because your clothes are ugly as She voiced her frustration with companies not being size inclusive. And she also stated that the companies that are size inclusive don't even have things that are trendy or cute for plus sized people. Don't nobody wanna have on zebra print and tropical island prints. And she was basically urging her followers to stop supporting brands that aren't supporting plus sized people. But if you made the same clothes that you made for straight sizes and plus sizes, I don't know, maybe that revenue would be a little bit stronger. She shouted out the company Fashion Nova for not only being inclusive, but having cute items for plus size women. And she also talked about how there's so much discourse about people shopping sustainably and not shopping fast fashion. I didn't even realize this. She brought this to light that there's a lot of sustainable brands out here, but they are not catering to plus size people. Shortly after Fanita's rant, a TikToker and YouTuber by the name of Leo Skeppi made a TikTok video that he claims was completely unrelated to Fanita's video. He said that he didn't even see Fanita's video, Fanita's video before he posted his TikTok, which I don't know, I don't know. He stated that plus size people need to stop complaining about brands not catering to them. A brand not making your size in something does not give you grounds to talk and degrade the brand. Brands are allowed to want a certain look and image with their products. They are allowed to make things for the people they want to make them for. That was kind of his overall point. However, it didn't come out the best, okay? It definitely did not come out the best because he also said, I used to think clothes just weren't flattering. No, babe, the body wasn't flattering. It's probably not the clothing. It's probably you. It's probably the body that's not bodying. And there were several people that took offense to that, myself included, because what the heck? And the sad part about it all is, although he received a lot of criticism for those statements, he also received a lot of praise for his statements. I mean, before he took the video down, it had so many likes, so many people in the comment section were agreeing with him. Further pushes the point that a lot of people are fat phobic. Body positivity is just not as positive as it used to be. And I fear we are moving backwards in time. The pendulum is swinging back to the early 2000s. However, it's brought on a larger conversation so I don't know if y'all have been paying attention to the signs, but like we are re-entering a thin is in era. And I just feel a little nervous for myself, but also just our population as well. I just felt like we were just getting closer and closer to fat politics being something that is like not something that's just fringe like it being something that kind of reached the, the dominant narrative and i don't know man i just see i just see us back backpedaling a bit as a society we can't make all of this progress to be so inclusive and then step back into the early 2000s where we're shaming people it's just not cool i don't like it it's really hard to talk about the wellness epidemic without talking about fat phobia and the changes that need to be made in the industry on social media overall in conclusion i believe that there's many people who are more obsessed with the appearance of being healthy the aesthetic of health more than actually checking in with themselves and being healthy. We then start to see people just jumping from trend to trend, participating in yo-yo dieting, not doing a workout long enough for you to even see results. And this cycle repeats itself. The older I've gotten, the more I've tried to educate myself on health, the psychology of health. I don't want to be the person who is constantly posting videos titled, I lost 20 pounds in three months, how I lost 20 pounds in five months, how I lost like, I don't wanna keep coming on here showing you guys how I lost weight and then gain the weight right back and then show you guys how to lose the weight and then gain the weight back. I wanna show you guys how to live a lifestyle that is healthy, but also sustainable because it's not good to put your body through 
that amount of stress. I think it's important to remember that the fitness industry is a billion dollar industry. You as a consumer need to make sure that you're being mindful with what you purchase. I've stopped spending hundreds of dollars on activewear every couple of weeks. And I honestly unfollowed a lot of athletes on Instagram because I really did not love constant push to buy new activewear every other week. This doesn't mean I don't shop anymore and that I don't follow influencers anymore because that's not true. However, I do like to follow influencers who are just sharing their organic lives doing videos like this, helping people become their best selves. Don't like to follow influencers where their whole story is like 20 links at a time. Like that is just not my vibe anymore. I'm just trying to be a more conscious consumer. We can all love the fitness world. Let's love it in the best way possible. Brands know how fickle we as consumers are and they feed off of our insecurities and they know that we are going to do whatever we can to belong, unfortunately. I think it's important to take a step back and reflect on your health journey. Think about the things that work for you, that don't work for you, things that make you feel good, things that don't make you feel good. Build a daily routine off of who you are as a person, not based off of an aesthetic. Be mindful, be a conscious consumer, and focus more on your overall health. If you need help with content like this, I make so much content about becoming your best self here on my channel. I love sharing about my journey and sharing things that I've learned along the way. I hope that you subscribe and join the family because this is the safest place on the internet. Thank you so much for joining me. I talked a lot. I don't even know how long this video is going to be, but let me know how you felt about it down below. Let me know if you want to see more commentary style videos like this. I, I used to make a lot of videos like this. Um, most of them, if not all of them are privated because <laughs> it's a little controversial, not gonna lie, but I want to jump back into them slowly but surely. So let me know if you like this video by liking it down below and I will try to throw in a few of these videos in between my normal videos. But yeah, guys, thank you so much for joining me. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out, Girl Scout. Bye.